Mother Goddess, show me the secrets of my heart. Show me where I have wandered off my path. Show me how to find my path again. Fly before me, illuminating my path. Fly before me, showing me the broad road. Into my best future, show me the way. Prepare the way for my searching feet, O Mother of Light. You who dwell on the south on nine wooded hills, O oh, show me the way. The Slavic goddess, Baba Yaga's name, shows us a contradicting duality, where Baba means grandmother, or wise woman, and Yaga, horror, evil woman, or witch. She is the giver of gifts, or adulthood, yet she is also the bringer of death. She is considered to be the grand crone, the goddess of wisdom and death, and the bone mother. Wild and untamable, she is also the nature spirit, bringing wisdom and death of ego, and through death, rebirth. In fairy tales, Baba Yaga is an old hag with long grey hair and sharp teeth, who flies through the air in her mortar while using the pestle as a paddle. Located deep in the forest, her hut stands on a pair of chicken legs, with human feet as bolts and human hands as hinges. It is surrounded by a fence of human bones that are topped with human skulls, with eyes illuminating the darkness. Any visitor who enters her hut is asked whether they came of their own free will, or whether they were sent. It is within the Slavic tale of Vusilisa the Beautiful that we meet Baba Yaga. When Vusilisa was about 8 years old, her mother died, and just prior to her death, she gave the girl a tiny wooden doll, advising her that she should always carry the doll in her pocket, should evil threaten or sorrow befall upon her. All Vasilisa was to do was to give the doll something to eat and drink, and it would advise how she should act during times of need. After her mother died, eventually Vasilisa's father remarried. However, this woman was cold and cruel, having only married the merchant for his money. Her two daughters were equally as cruel, and all three set about instructing Vasilisa to undertake difficult tasks that she was only able to complete with the help of her doll. One day, the merchant had to travel to a distant kingdom and before he was scarcely out of sight, the stepmother sold the house and moved the family into a gloomy one on the edge of the forest. Each day, the stepmother sent Vusilisa into the forest in the hope she would encounter Baba Yaga, who was said to eat children. However, each evening Vusilisa made it back home. One day, the stepmother put out all the fires in the house and Vusilisa was sent to fetch light from Baba Yaga's hut. As she set out on her journey, a mysterious man rode by Vusilisa dressed in white, riding a white horse whose harness was also white. As she continued to walk, a similar rider passed her, except he was clad all in red and on a blood red horse. Eventually, she came to a house that stood on chicken legs and was surrounded by a fence made from human bones. A third rider, like the others, but dressed in black and on a coal black horse rode past her. As he passed her, the night fell and the eye sockets of the skulls became luminous. Vusilisa was too frightened to run away, and so Baba Yaga found her when she arrived in her mortar, telling the witch that her stepmother had sent her to borrow some fire. Vusilisa was set to work to earn the fire, or be eaten for supper. The first task was that Vusilisa had to clean the house and yard, cook supper, and pick the mouldy corn out of the good grain. After Baba Yaga left, Vusilisa set about cooking the meal while her dole attended to the other chores. At dawn, the white rider passed, at or before noon, the red. As the black rider rode past, Baba Yaga returned, bade three pairs of disembodied hands to grind the corn, and set Vusilisa the same tasks for the next day, with the addition of sorting out black grains from wild peas. Again, the doll did all except cooking the meal. Upon her return, Baba Yaga again set the three pairs of hands to grind the grain. The tasks for the third day were also very similar, and included cleaning poppy seeds that had been mixed with dirt. While undertaking the tasks, Vusilisa remained silent until Baba Yaga asked her if she was dumb, and told the girl that she could ask a question. Vusilisa asked about the three riders, to which she was told that they were servants of Baba Yaga. The white was her bright day the red was the round sun, and the black one was the night. In return, Baba Yaga demanded the cause of Vusilisa's success with respect to the tasks that were set. On hearing the answer, by my mother's blessing, Baba Yaga sent Vusilisa home as she did not want one who bears a blessing to cross her threshold. Before the girl got to the gate, Baba Yaga flung a skull with 
burning eyes at her and said that this was the fire that Vusilisa's stepmother had requested. Upon her return, the light from the skull burnt the stepmother and Vusilisa's stepsisters to ashes. Vusilisa moved back to the village where she was taken in by an old woman, all the time feeding her little doll. One day, Tsar brought a piece of linen that Vusilisa had woven and requested her presence. Upon seeing her beauty, the Tsar married Vusilisa and together with the old woman, Vusilisa went to live in the palace with her wooden doll in her pocket. In folklore and myth, Baba Yiga is portrayed as both the antagonist and the guide. As an aspect of the dark goddess, she is wise and gives gifts of splendor to the worthy, but most often she is the bone mother, the devourer of human flesh. Her home is built from the bones of her victims, and in many tales, she is said to kidnap children to eat for supper. This aspect of her character, though terrible at first glance, can be seen as a guiding principle, as well as a doorway to initiation. Accepting the mystery of the unknown is where Baba Yiga teaches us to release the tameness of life and step out into the wild, the forests, and seek adventures. To embrace wildness is an exercise which leads us to freedom of spirit and ego. Within our untamed, uncivilized self, there are no restrictions, no buckling to fear, and no illusions. Our wild spirit is where we find the creative power to build our own path, our own destinies, and change the world around us. Baba Yiga's only request to the traveler who enters her home of darkness is that they do so of their own free will. Once inside, completion of the tasks she requests earns the practitioner great rewards. When working with Baba Yiga, she places you in situations that test your intuition, that wash away the innocence of youth so that you can learn to trust your adult self. In this manner, adolescence is not measured by age, but rather by experience. She devours innocence and naivety, peels back the skin in order to eat the flesh of ignorance and illusion, to leave the bones of your true self exposed. As the innocence dies, the experiences and temperament of those past times remain. In her role as life, death, rebirth, Baba Yiga is simply killing the parts of your mind and life which are no longer of consequence to make way for the new. She then gives you the nourishment you need in the form of wisdom gaining experiences. Baba Yiga teaches us about the unconscious mind and the effect it has on our lives even when we are not paying attention. Under her instruction, we discover the strength of our intuition and learn to trust it regardless of what our friends, family, or even logic says. Once we learn to trust our instincts and follow our intuition, we are, in a sense, no longer a part of the world. We walk between the worlds. If you would like to learn more about the Baba Yiga and many other dark goddesses, then I recommend you start with our book, Encountering the Dark Goddess, A Journey into the Shadow Realms by Francis Billinghurst, who also provided the words for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for weekly content, and we'll see you next time.